everybody, it's JT Sports and Match You Guys with another video. This video, I'm here with my Cincinnati Bengals versus the Pittsburgh Steelers NFL Week 4 preview and prediction. I'm going to be previewing this matchup and get my prediction for who will win this game. Now, before I begin, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, below NFL videos, and college football videos daily. So, Cincinnati Bengals, Pittsburgh Steelers, both of these teams have yet to win a game. So whoever wins this game is going to end up getting their first win of the season. And this is a very, very big game. And here's why, right? Because a lot of people think that since both of these teams are 0-3, the season is pretty much over for them. Well, it's not, it's not over quite yet. And here's why, right? So in the AFC North Division, Baltimore last week lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. That makes Baltimore 2-1. Baltimore has to play the Cleveland Browns, right? So if Cleveland manages to beat the Baltimore Ravens, then Cleveland will be in 2-2, two and, two, and Baltimore will be 2-2, two and two, and whoever wins this game will be 1-3. and three. So whoever wins this game will be 1-3, and three, and if Baltimore loses to Cleveland, then, I mean, you're only one game behind for the divisional lead. So, I mean, this game still has... This game, whoever wins this game... It it's better it's better to be one and three than it is to be on four. Whoever starts out one and three, then I mean their chances of making the playoffs are pretty low because if there have been 175 teams in NFL history to start the season out 0 and three, and only five of those teams have made it to the playoffs, which means these two teams have a 2.9 percent chance of making it to the playoffs as of right now. So I mean, whoever wins this game. This is going to be a big momentum booster for whoever wins this game. And also, if the Baltimore Ravens lose to the Cleveland Browns this weekend, they'll be 2-2. Two and two. Cleveland will be 2-2. Two and two. And whoever wins this game, the Bengals or the Steelers, they could be 1-3. And, and they could be back into it a little bit. They can only they could be one game back. Instead of if Baltimore wins, then Baltimore will be 3-1 on the season. And then there'll be two games back. So it's better to be one game back than this to be two games back. So whoever wins this game, if Baltimore loses, then they could easily be right back into it. So, I mean, the Cincinnati Bengals, they played the Buffalo Bills last week. They ended up losing there. I told everybody that this Buffalo Bills defense was going to be very good. They were going to suffocate the Cincinnati Bengals offense. And they did that for most of the game, but Cincinnati was able to put up a couple of points near the end. But for the most part, the Buffalo Bills defense really dominated the Cincinnati Bengals offense. Andy Dalton threw two interceptions. They also forced another turnover there, the Buffalo Bills defense. So, I mean, this Cincinnati Bengals offense, I do think is pretty improved. I think Andy Dalton has been playing pretty good. And if he keeps up the play that he's been playing so far, then I think he'll be good enough to remain the starter for the Cincinnati Bengals for at least another season. So I think Andy Dalton has been playing pretty good so far. John Ross has been pretty good. Tyler Boyd has been pretty good as well. So the Cincinnati Bengals offense, I mean... Their offense can score. The offense is pretty solid. But, I mean, the skill position isn't a problem with the offense. The big problem with this offense is the offensive line. And when you're going against a deep line like Pittsburgh that's very disruptive, they can cause a lot of havoc, a lot of chaos. We saw it in the 49ers game. I mean, this deep line, they forced the fumble. Well, it wasn't really a fumble. It was kind of as an interception. What happened was Jimmy Garoppolo threw the pass. I think it was to Matt Breida. And, like, Matt Breida, like, he got hit. Or in, like, I think somebody made, one of the defensive linemen made the hit, and, like, the ball popped up, and they ended up catching it and something like that. So, I mean, I, I don't know if it's a fumble or an interception. I think it was counted as an interception on Jimmy Garoppolo's part. But, I mean, the this defensive line, they can cause a lot of chaos. And if you're not able to if you're not able to stop this Pittsburgh Steelers defensive line and this pass was a Pittsburgh, then I think Cincinnati's going to be in for a very, very long game. And, I mean, Cincinnati's off the line, I mean, is it's really that good. I mean, in the offseason, they lost two starters on the offensive line. One got placed on IR, and the other just walked out and retired. So, I mean, this Cincinnati Bengals off the line is a huge question mark going into this game. Now, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I mean, last week, they lost the game versus the 49ers. That's all there is to say. The 49ers were saying, here, you want to win the game? Here, you go ahead and win it. And Pittsburgh's just throwing the back like, no, you win the game. And San Francisco was like, no, I insist you win the game. And Pittsburgh's like, no, you win the game. And the 49ers were like, okay, man, we, if you guys don't want to win the game, we try to give you a chance to win the game. So we're just going to go ahead and win the game, man. That's basically what it is, man. I mean, James Conner fumbled the ball inside the five minutes. That was probably the thing that pretty much put the nail in the coffin for the Pittsburgh Steelers was when James 
Conner fumbled within five minutes. I mean, James Conner inside the fourth quarter, man. I mean, he this isn't the first that wasn't the first incidence of him fumbling and crunch time like that. He also did the same thing in a season opener last season in 2018 against the Cleveland Browns. So I mean, it's a this game for Pittsburgh, I mean, it's very big. And, I mean, it's very big for the Cincinnati Bengals as well because whoever wins this, whoever loses this game is going to end up being 0-4. But for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I mean, their offense, Mason Rudolph hasn't really been – he didn't play that bad last week. I don't think he played bad at all. I think he played pretty good. I mean, he has four touchdowns on the season so far, and I think he's only thrown about, like, two interceptions, I think, or either two or three interceptions. So Mason Rudolph has played very well. I think the thing with the Pittsburgh Steelers, his offense was like it was a little bit too late the offense started start to click a little bit a little too late in that game and let's get into my keys to victory what each of these teams is doing they would have a chance to win this game for the Cincinnati Bengals um they're gonna have to protect Andy Dalton I mean we I talked about this Pittsburgh Silla defensive line with Stefan to it Cam Hayward and TJ Watt um, they're going to have to protect Andy Dawn. If not, this game is pretty much going to be a very long game for the Cincinnati Bengals. And I mean, it's just going to, this defense line is just going to cause a lot of chaos if they're not able to get pressure on Andy Dawn. And I, also, Andy Dawn, I mean, if you give Andy Dawn time to throw, he's going to make you pay with how good he's been playing so far this season. So, Pittsburgh's um, defensive line has to be able to get pressure and also you don't want to rely on the Pittsburgh Silver secondary to get any stops because we already know how garbage that secondary has been I mean they got Mingo Fitzpatrick who ended up making a play in his first game but that's pretty much it so I mean the secondary man the secondary is a big weak point in a way that you can help your secondary out is by getting after the quarterback and forcing the quarterback to get the ball out fast, which means your defensive backs and your cornerbacks don't have to drop back in coverage for that long. So that also helps out the secondary when the defensive line is able to get pressure on the quarterback. And the last thing the Cincinnati Bengals need to do and they were to win this game is they had to attack the secondary of the Pittsburgh Steelers. The secondary for the Pittsburgh Steelers has not been that good, although it was a little bit better last week. But for most of the whole entire season, this Pittsburgh Steelers secondary has not been good. I think this secondary is allowing quarterbacks to complete over 70% of their passage, which I believe is tied for the third worst in the NFL and completion percentage allowed. So... If you're the Cincinnati Bengals, you're licking your chops and you're telling Andy Dolan, hey, just go ahead and throw the ball to guys like John Ross and Tyler Boyd because the Pittsburgh Steelers probably 80% of their chance time are not going to be able to stop these guys. And it's just reflected in the stats shown. Pittsburgh has allowed quarterbacks, opposing quarterbacks to complete over 70% of their passes, which is not that good. So if you're the Cincinnati Bengals, you obviously want to attack the weak point of that Pittsburgh Steelers defense, which is their secondary. Now, for the Steelers to win this game, they need to be able to get pressure on Andy Dalton. This is a very good defensive line. And if this defensive line isn't able to be stopped, then this is going to be a very long day for the Cincinnati Bengals. Stephon Tewitt, Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, all of those guys are more than capable of causing havoc and giving the opposing offensive lineman fits. So, if they're able to get pressure on Andy Dalton, then I think this game could end up being won by Pittsburgh if they're able to get do that. Then, also, the offense needs to be able to sustain drive. Drives and I mean better play calling as well. The offense just needs to play a little bit, has to play way better than what they have been doing the last couple of weeks. Um, the big reason why the Pittsburgh defense has also been bad has been because of the fact that they're just being put on the field a little bit too much. I mean, anytime you as a defense, anytime like, like last week, the defense they were getting turnovers, they were getting stops, but the offense wasn't able to sustain drives, and that was a big reason why San Francisco was able to put points on the board was because I don't care how good of a defense that you have, if your defense is getting put put on the field for like after like a one minute one minute break like Pittsburgh was having like 45 second one minute drives when they were going three and out so anytime your defense gets a stop and they have to go right back on the field one minute later of course they're going to end up getting the gas more quickly they're going to end up giving up a lot of points I mean that when you look at some of the best defenses in the NFL they're not on the field a lot I mean they're on the field but they're not on the field as many times as a team like Pittsburgh is on the field so I mean I don't care how good of a defense you have if you're on the field a lot then you're defense is eventually going to get tired they're going to get gas and they're going to end up giving no points so this Pittsburgh still offense needs to be able to sustain drives and they also need to play better I mean I think 
the offensive coordinator for the Pittsburgh Steelers needs to call better plays. I think they need to let Mason Rudolph take a lot more shots deep because Mason Rudolph has a very nice arm, nice deep ball accuracy as well. So, I mean, let this guy air the ball out. Stop trying to protect this guy. Let this guy air it out. And then the last thing that Pittsburgh Steelers need to do when they were to win this game is they need to score touchdowns in the red zone. And that's a trend that I've been noticing with the Pittsburgh Steelers is that we were they were getting turnovers last week versus the 49ers. They were getting inside the red zone, but instead of scoring touchdowns inside the red zones, they were settling and kicking field goals. And that's not how you win football games. To win football games, you have to be able to score touchdowns instead of field goals inside of the 20. And Pittsburgh's offense has not been able to do that. They've been settling for field goals inside the red zone so I mean Pittsburgh's I don't know what it is but I mean they just need to have better execution and they need to start scoring touchdowns in the red zone instead of field goals so the team I'm going with to win this game I'm going with the Pittsburgh Steelers to win this game I do think the Pittsburgh Steelers are a better team than the Cincinnati Bengals the off the line is better the off the line has been letting Mason Rudolph get hit that much the offensive line has played pretty good. I just think Pittsburgh, I just think it all comes down to execution in this game. And if Pittsburgh is able to execute, then they should be able to win this game. And also, Pittsburgh is at home as well. And it's very tough to beat the Steelers at home. So, I think Pittsburgh wins this game. I say Pittsburgh wins this game 20 to 13 is my final score prediction so let me know who you guys think is going to end up winning this game down in the comment section down below make sure to like if you don't subscribe to the channel for more nfl videos and college football videos and thanks for watching